let's continue our wonderful study of z-scores. I know you guys are having a ton of fun right now. I know I am too. Um, <clears throat> just a hint of sarcasm there. Not really. I love this stuff. It's, it's, it really is very interesting to me. Uh, the way everything fits together. I love using z-scores to see how things fit together with a normal model. Um, and here's another, here's another example. There's something in statistics called the 68-95-99.7 rule. Sometimes this is referred to as the empirical rule. Every time I hear the empirical rule, I think of Darth Vader and the Empire in uh, Star Wars, of course. So the empirical rule. I won't do my Darth Vader voice. It's not very good. And nobody wants to hear me doing any heavy breathing. So anyways, the empirical rule or the 68-95-99.7 rule works like this. This distribution, this bell-shaped and symmetric distribution, we can say is normal because it's bell-shaped and symmetric. And we're going to use it to represent all of our data. Remember, this, this shape represents all of the data. So over in this tail, I have just a little bit of data. And over here in this tail, I have a little bit of data. But in the middle, man, I've got a ton of data. The majority of my data is in the middle, right here. There's not a whole lot of data over here because that's just a little sliver and another little sliver over here on the right. But in the middle is the majority of my data right there. Down here, not a whole lot of data. Over here, not a whole lot of data. Right here, a lot of data. So, how does the 68-95-99.7 rule work? Well, it's pretty self-explanatory once you see it. In the center of my distribution, if I have standardized things, is a z-score of zero. But if I go one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below the mean, I have now gone to a z-score of positive 1 and negative 1. And by the way, just a, a little side note, um, z -score, a z-score of 1 and a z-score of negative 1, those are usually at the point of inflection on your bell-shaped curve. A point of inflection is where your curve switches from concave to convex. So right about here is where this curve changes from this direction to this direction, from concave to convex, depending on how you look at it. Same thing on this side. This concave to convex. So right about here is my point of inflection. That's a, that's a pretty important concept to remember, especially when you're drawing pictures. Where is this, where is this z-score of positive 1? Where is the z-score of negative 1? Well, it's right there. One standard deviation above the mean and one standard deviation below the mean is located where at the point of inflection, where the curve changes from concave to convex. But let me go ahead and erase those. Let's go back to the empirical rule or the 68-95-99.7 rule. What does this mean? Well, if I go one standard deviation above the mean and one standard deviation below the mean, I have included 68% of my data. About 68% of the data is between one standard deviation below the mean and one standard deviation above the mean. So everything that I'm coloring in here right now in green is about 68% of the data. It's not exactly 68%, but it's close enough for us to use this 68-95-99.7 rule. Okay? Because remember, this picture represents all of your data. So 68% of the data is between one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below the mean. <clears throat> the rest of this goes fairly quickly because as we go one, two standard deviations above and two standard deviations below the mean at a z-score of 2 and negative 2, I now am including 95% of the data. So if I continue to color this in, let's go in, let's go with yellow here. If I make all of this yellow, 
the green and the yellow together represents about 95% of my data, okay? And then finally, if I go just a little bit further and go one more standard deviation above and one st more standard deviation below and go at positive three and negative three for my z-scores, I am including almost all of my data, but not all of it, 99.7% of all the data is between a z-score of negative three and a z-score of positive three. <clears throat> so that tells us that in this little tail, in this tail right here, and then also in this little tail right here, I am barely including any of the data. Between those two tails together, I've got about 0.3% of the data, which is not very much. Less than 1% of the data is out here beyond a z-score of positive 3 or negative 3. That's the empirical rule, okay? The 68, 99.7 rule says that about 68% of the data falls between one standard deviation above and one standard deviation below the mean. About 95% of the data lies between uh, two standard deviations below and two standard deviations above the mean. And finally, about 99.7% of the data falls between three and negative three for our z-scores, or three standard deviations above and three standard deviations below the mean. It's not exactly 68 and 95 and 99.7, but it's close enough for us to use this rule to make predictions and, and find some probabilities. So we're going to use this empirical rule or the 68, 95, 99.7 rule to help us in statistics.